crimp. So they've got a heat shrink. Uh, hopefully we can focus on that there. They've got a heat shrink jacket and then you can see a little band of solder in the middle. So that solder is supposed to melt and go uh, penetrate the wires uh, within that area there and make the connection without having to crimp it. So we've got a variety of these uh, connectors that we've just bought online to try them out. Ideally, you'd want the solder to shrink at about the same time that the rest of the jacket shrinks and the adhesive uh, would liquefy and then after a few seconds cool and the wire would be glued in to the connector. Uh, that's how it's supposed to work or you'd think that would have work, but uh, let's give it a try here and see. I've just used an un, unstripped wire here so you can maybe see a bit more clearly uh, when the solder liquefies. So the jacket's already shrinking. stop there for a second so you can see that the jacket is already shrunk even at the far end where I haven't haven't actually been blowing hot air too much so um, according to our thermal it's showing 67 67 degrees and the solder in the middle is showing about six degrees. Of course, it's still cooling. Uh, but the big thing is, let's just see if the adhesive is working at this point. So I can still quite easily pull the wire out with maybe a quarter pound of force. Uh, so I would say the adhesive does not work. Let's continue the experiment and see how hot it takes to get to melt the solder in the middle. Okay, you can see the solder is definitely flowing there. And according to our thermal, we're running around 120, 120. First deal is get the, the end is fairly small compared to a, um, a heat shrink adhesive crimp that we normally use. Um, then what you're supposed to do with them is kind of weave the wires together and I've tried this three or four times and I'm still not an expert at it. So uh, weave the wires together and then I'm giving them a little bit of a twist here because the next thing you're supposed to do is keep those wires pushed together so the strands are all woven and then slide the connector over it. So you can see the problem here is that um, one of the challenges, maybe it's my ability, maybe it's the design, uh, is that it's very easy to have little flyaway wires. And it doesn't seem like a big deal, but if this is a positive wire and it grounds, even that little strand will cause a fuse to go. So you have to be very cautious and you have to keep make sure you keep the wires together, pushed together while you're doing this. So that's kind of what we want to see, I believe, is where the connector, the, the band of solder is over top of the, um, the wire strands that have been kind of interlaced together. So uh, normally solder, uh, sorry, liquefies at a fairly high temperature relative to the temperature of the heat shrink uh, jacket. So I'm not really sure. The, the part we're skeptical about is will the solder actually um, 
penetrate the wires because you don't just want the solder to melt on the outside. Ideally, you want solder to go all the way through all the strands so that each strand is soldered and has uh, conductivity, not just the outside jacket. So uh, you don't want airspace in the middle, um, ideally. So then we also want these to heat shrink down, shrink down onto the wires to provide um, some weather sealing so the air doesn't get in and oxidize the exposed wire underneath. Um, so that's uh, part one. And then part two is when the wire gets hot, is, will it get hot enough to release that uh, solder, like to, to melt that solder? So because there's no mechanical crimp here, uh, if the wire gets really hot, will that solder melt? And then theoretically let the wire go, uh, release the wire. Now you still have the heat shrink here, but like I said, there's no adhesive in here to, to glue it together. Um, so that's the theory. So I'm gonna heat shrink this thing now and see what happens. It's starting to shrink the jacket there. Now the key is the solder in the middle. So as you can see, the temperature that it took the heat the, to shrink the jacket, oh, I got a little flyaway there. It's come through, it looks like, through the connector. So it's not enough to um, shrink the solder, so let's turn it up. This is full on an 1800-watt heat gun. There, it's starting to melt now. You can see it a little bit. And the wire down where my hand is here is getting quite warm. Not really seeing any solder flowing in there yet. A little bit. That's about all I can do. It's not going any, not getting any better. If you do use a heat gun, be really careful where you put it down because that metal tip gets extremely hot for a long time. You'd be surprised how long it'll stay hot. So. It's gooey on the outside, which is a little bit scary. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but the um, there's a little wire that's come through the jacket. And that's, it just, yeah, it's definitely a wire, it's sharp. So uh, that's not a good thing, obviously, because if that touched anything that is grounded, uh, it would ground out the, the circuit. So we're gonna test it anyway, though, just for fun. So we're gonna dead short this wire, this 18 gauge wire with that connector to that battery and uh, see what happens. All right, so we're gonna use pliers because this wire is gonna get really hot in a big hurry and it's gonna to wanna to weld itself to that negative terminal, sure enough. So what was that, a quarter second and the whole wire smoked. Uh, pull out our handy thermal imager and it's showing 55 Celsius at the connector. So we're just gonna wait a second before we handle it here. And you can see the uh, connector still intact. The solder did not melt. You can see that the wire uh, bubbled all the way along its insulation. Uh, sorry for the focus issues here. And the connector was intact. So there's a positive there, but uh, still don't think we're gonna be using these in our shop anytime soon. So these things definitely have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one of the advantages is you don't need a crimping tool, which in some areas of a vehicle is really hard to get into inside a console or behind a grill or something like that. Of course, the flip side to that is you now need to use a very hot heat gun in there. Um, you could argue that using a crimping tool 
requires a heat gun as well because you have to heat shrink the jacket if you're using the good ones like we do, uh, but not nearly the temperature that's required for the soldered ones. Um, the other thing is the jacket appears to be quite thin and the wires poke through easily as you saw very early on in the video. They do take a long time to shrink though and I don't really see how you're going to get away from that because solder just shrinks at a much higher temperature than the rest of the jacket. So from that perspective, uh, for if you're in production of vehicles, it really slows you down. Um, so we probably won't see using these in our shop, but uh, whether they're right for your application or not uh, will depend on your application and your skills. Hopefully this video helps. Thanks for watching.